so me and the studio audience here over on Twitch are having a nice Easter Sunday. Uh, just playing around with stuff and saying hi. Say hi, studio audience, if you want to. Say hi. Um, uh, and so we've, we've gone through this a couple of times. It's about time for me to make a video on it to, to clarify for everybody. There's a lot of misinformation out there right now about the something as simple as looking up a user's home directory with Go. So you're coding in Go and you want to do something very simple. You just want to look up the user's home directory. That's it, right? It seems to be a nice, easy thing. And you go out and you do a search on the internet. And what you end up finding is, you know, a, a bunch of wrong answers. And you don't know they're wrong when you find them, though. And that's the problem. So there's one on Stack Exchange. Uh, the following is the best way a user get in via home. Right. Well, that's actually not wrong. That's dead wrong. And that's a five. That answer is nine years old. Uh, but however, that was an answer that was created in response to some really serious bugs that, that started popping up in uh, Darwin at first. And, and in Docker, you can read this entire thread. Uh, it's issue 6376 on Golang. Um, and you can go read the whole thing. And this will this was actually this brought up. This was come up some months weeks back when i started doing this and somebody told me no you need to go use you need to go use the, the github so and, and this is by the way the the twitch uh command line api which is absolute trash uh was you just read the commit history if you want to have a real good laugh it's just hilarious it's so funny <laughs> anyway but if you want to go find uh so it's i think it's go dash homder this was made by a very reputable programmer on the hashcore team and has become recommended as the way to do it. You don't need it. You don't need it. Okay. So if you're, if somebody recommends to you to use this, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not current anymore. And I found this out the hard way. Um, and because I got a lot of different confer different opinions, I knew immediately I had to make a video about this. So, so here's, here's the real deal. And I imagine a lot of the misunderstandings because this is the first hit on Stack Overflow. So you get this answer and then you get this little thread down here that says uh, it doesn't work when cross-compiled. Here's the issue. That's the thing I just linked to. So if you need to find all this stuff on your own, you can do that. Um, it's probably hard for you to read. Uh, user user homer. Okay. And the thing that really sucks about this is that this is, as usual, the second answer to Stack Exchange. This happens to be the right answer, but it's the second answer. <laughs> Okay, and this is the actual right answer, and it's right for lots of reasons I'm going to get into, but that's the right answer. Um, uh, there, there was another link here, and I'm not saying. Oh, here it is. It is also so. So the number, so the number two answer. So the number one answer is this, which is absolutely. I mean, if you have to do it, fine. And as usual, Stack Exchange Stack Overflow is full of crap and wrong. Uh, so, but there's a lot of answers here, so we're going to talk about them. This thing here, which is also the same thing that is in Go by example. So if you go to the, if if you search for for how to search for home directories, this is directly quoted from the Go by example, which is also dead wrong and has no references whatsoever to the right thing. And this is this is the plight of coders in general, but it's it's particularly the plight of Go coders because Go, like like Rust or any other language, is moving pretty quickly, and it's had a lot of changes. And those changes are not represented in in the body of of content that's out on the internet. It's one of the massive plaguing issues of our time is not having current knowledge. And I personally, I would like to address that with the Association for Federated Knowledge work using the Knowledge Exchange Grid, where knowledge can expire. This is another issue, but you know, if you want to go to that rabbit hole with me another day, we can do that about way uh, one proposed solution to get over this problem of expired knowledge. And so this is, but this is wrong. This is just dead wrong. In fact, this is so wrong that the reason that this library was created was because it was using Sego. And, and I believe even that problem has been fixed now because I tested that last week. I'm not positive about it. I've tested it uh, mediocrely, but you don't even need it anymore because we found another solution. Um, so, so this is user.current grabs the information from, uh, you know, assumedly underneath the hood, we looked at the code. It's grabbing it, you know, using C calls to get the home directory, which is part of the Etsy password file on Unix, blah, blah, blah. And uses use a Sego and you don't want any Sego dependencies because as you can read very <laughs> verbosely in this thing, it breaks all kinds of stuff, including Docker. In fact, Honeywa, 
Where is he? Uh, yeah, uh, people can prefer Rust over Go if you want. You got to have a reason to prefer. We're going to talk about Rust and Go right now. Um, but uh, so yeah, I mean, it, you you can prefer it all you want. It's just not going to get you a job. <laughs> so make file is broken, right? So actually, Taniwa, who he did some coding for for Docker, knows the MP forty two. So this this use of this broke. It broke cross compilation, which is one of Go's greatest claims to fame. You can compile code for Windows on a Linux machine or a Mac or anything, and that's what you do, unless you do this. And so f apparently for a, over a decade, people have been citing this as the problem to not use it. Now, I believe it's been fixed since then. And there's actually a build flag that you can set that will protect you from that, but you don't need any of that. Um, I mean, it was a lot of hassle that I went down, and I just want to save you the hassle of going through it. I spent more than a day researching if using this was safe for Seago compatibility, and I looked up the the the, the build code, uh, it's very deeply buried someplace. I don't even know where to find it now. Again, there's like a generator, you know, uh, build uh, flag that you can put in there that will force it uh, to do the right thing and not do Seago if it's not there. And it makes it basically you do all that crap just so you can use user home directory and look up the user's home directory. Shouldn't be that hard. Right. And I don't know if you noticed this, but the number one solution to all this is just use the environment variable. That has its own problems. And we're going to get there hopefully in 17 minutes. But that is the standard, not this one, a variation on that. This this variation right here. OK, so um, and if you want, you can use this really ancient library that was updated. You know, it was tweaked. The Go mod was added in 1.13, but the actual code was not updated very recently at all. And it's probably been changed under the hood to use. Uh, why not just use your built-in package requires to go to This is no longer, I don't believe this is true, and I confirmed it. It doesn't matter, though, because you shouldn't use that either. This is what you should use. Um, you should use the one well, we're going to, well, actually, I think I have a link here to it, so we can just go ahead and use it. So you should use this as of go 1.12. We're on 1.16 now, and if you're on anything pre-1.13, you need to change now. Because 1.13 is the new modules. They already, they're getting ready to deprecate use of mods. And there's another number of reasons to get off of it. Um, is 1.16 deprecates all of IO Util as well. It's completely deprecated. If you're using anything in IO Util, it's old. And you need to get rid of it and get off of it and learn what's different. And But one of the pieces that changed in 1.12 and 1.13 was the addition of user home dir. And User home directory returns the current user's home directory. On Unix, including uh, including macOS, it returns the home environment variable. On Windows, it returns user profile. On Plan 9, it returns home environment variable. So any, everything in OS is guaranteed to be cross-compilation comp safe. So you can put you can use stuff in there, and you'll be good to go. Um, and you don't have to worry about it. You can you actually go look at the code here. Um, uh, it, program what you enjoy. Fine. That's fine. Uh, unless your boss tells you otherwise. Um, so so here's the actual code. It says, go look it up. It's basically the same as OS Get ENV. Uh, it looks up, you know, whatever those environment variables are. Uh, on some geese, the home directory is not always defined. <laughs> I guess geese, geese and goose. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, there's a joke there in the code. Uh, so uh, case Android, blah, blah, blah. Case iOS return, blah, blah, blah. So... This is user home. This is in 1.12. And what I want to show you is that there's actually some more stuff. And we're going to talk about that as well and why this is the way to do it now. Now, I have to change all of my code. I want to show you some code that I wrote very recently, probably within the last month, called Configdir. And all I was trying to do was come up with what I understand to be the free open source desktop foundations, uh, uh, the open desktop foundations. Uh, specification for where stuff should go. And you should, if you don't know about it, you should learn about it today because it's really important, not just for Linux and containerization and everything, but just in general across the board. This is across all OSs. Uh, this is how files should be organized in your home directory. And they, I mean, they've had opinions about, you know, Etsy and all this other stuff for years. And now they finally have opinions, good, good opinions about how your desktop should be organized. And it's not slash bin, by the way, home bin. It's like home.local bin. And etc. So go learn about it. And so I had a need to reliably come up with a configuration directory to write config files, etc. And so I followed this thing. I said, if there's an XDG config, go use that. If there's not, use the default. This is used, assumed to be the default for XDG config home. So you can safely assume that default if you want. Uh, otherwise, go here. And that's something I added. Uh, but 
the config directory is going to be, this is, you know, so, so, and this is all well and good, but I'm showing you this because obviously this is implied that there's a home directory here. Well, how do you look up home? Right. And so when I, when I built this the other, you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was, this is when the controversy came up and by the way, I always use follow path joins. So you don't, so you get cross platform compatible joins for your paths. Um, and this is when the controversy about whether I could use home directory or not came up and I did a bunch of testing and confirmed it was okay. I now realize that all this code has to be ripped out because why? Because it's not using the new standard. So the new standard for this, which I just barely found out today is to do os.userhomedir. And it does look up the home environment variable. And I still want to come back to the problems with that so you can be aware of it, but I think they're acceptable problems. But the more important reason to use user homedir is that there are two other, you know, siblings to this function, user configdir and user cacheDir. All right. Now, um, these go together. The, you notice this one was added in 1.11. Uh, this was added in 1.12, 1.13. I think 1.13 because this is really, really popular now. If you look at the source code for this, it does exactly what mine does, basically. It says, get the home environment variable, um, and then in plan nine, it's lowercase home. Uh, get Here we go. On Unix, oh, it must be Unix only for that. Hmm. Didn't realize. So get xdg config home if it's there. Uh, if it's not, get the environment variable home and then grab that. Uh, in which case, uh, add on to the config form, add dot config because this is a default. Uh, and if neither of those are defined, don't do anything. In my case, I'm going to also add in, you know, dot whatever. Somebody's still old school and does like dot tmux or dot bim or c or dot whatever. Um, so this code is already there. And so there's no reason for me to have uh, a, a dependency on my own code. It doesn't hurt anything. But there's no reason not to use this. I'm going to just end this video uh, more or less by saying use os.userhomedir, user configdir, and user cacheDir. Now, that's just know that that exists. The example is wrong. It, the home, go homedir is wrong, uh, in my opinion. Using the, the config, the, the, the user current, and if you get that and looking up their homedir, not only is it a pain in the ass, but it because it's you know multiple lines to do that but it's it's wrong arguably with the seago thing if i miss something it's possible that there's still seago problems with that so don't use it and also stop you from having people telling you hey you need to do that you can't use that because it's dangerous because somebody read that old thread years ago uh and now you know and they recommended go home directory now you can be the smart one and you can say or the current one and you can say no don't use that that's the wrong thing as of 1.13 there's a user configure now or there's a user home drive, I should be using that now. Oh, and then usually if they're going to retort back to you at that, and this is the last part of this video, what is the danger of using, of using environment variables? So you can change the home variable anytime you want, anything, right? And, and every process that sees that change to the home environment variable uh, is going to operate on that different environment variable. Now, I happen to think that that's fine in fact, I think that that actually helps with testing, because if you use if you use Homer, one of the things I've struggled with in the, when writing this configure thing is being able to test the situation where one of these variable environment variables is not set. But if I use this, then I have control, complete control over the environment, so I can change the environment during my test cases without resulting, you know, uh, going all the way to a container for testing and stuff like that. So my my suggestion is. To just stick with these, and then you can you can not only can you uh, alter the environment variable during testing so that you can mock those home directories without affecting the current system, uh, but you also have a, a consistent approach uh, for configure and cacher. But it's really important that you understand that those environment variables are the source of that information, and that those environment variables can be changed. The only argument, valid argument that I could see or using user.current and homedir from that is because that information comes straight from the home entry, the home directory entry in Etsy password that is protected and syst you know, by the system. That cannot be messed around with. It's also impossible to test it because you can't change it. Unless, well, it's not impossible. You have to make a container to test it. It's one of my biggest gripes about it because when you use that, it's very, very safe 
because it's guaranteed to be the entry from Etsy password in the unit case of Unix. I don't even know what it is in the case of, you know, other systems. It's, it's guaranteed to be from Etsy password, which means it's safer than the home environment variable. The home environment variable can be manipulated for better or worse. That means you can use it for testing and all kinds of fun stuff. But it also means that if somebody gets access to your account, and to control that thing, or they can mess with your environment before your script runs with elevated permissions or something, God help you, right? Then then they, they might be able to cause, you know, it, it, this this information, cashier, configure, and homedir, is usually the thing that, that indicates where your secret tokens are going to be written or where, you know, uh, stuff like that, you know. And if, if you're not using, you know, some sort of encrypted, you know, trust list kind of uh, approach to this for disk, you know, we could debate that all day. Some people feel like that's overkill. Some people feel like nothing should ever touch this. It's not encrypted uh, that has a password on it and everything. And and I'm, I don't want to debate that right now. But just be aware um, that using home as an environment variable as your source for the home directory on any of those systems is subject to an easier hack attempt than the one that's tied to the system directly and the user account that's been stored in the registry, Etsy password or whatever it is for, for Windows. All right, that's all I have about that. Um, and I'm sure people probably have opinions there. Short answer, the TLDR at the very end of the whole video is just use user homedir, use user configdir, and use user cashdir and call it a day. I have to rip up my code and change it up to use these things. And ever since I know that now, I'll be using that from now on. It's available from 1.13 on, so that's the thing to do. Bye.